Hey, y'all. As you can see, we're putting this thing together. I know I've shown you very step-by-step -step doing all the fab work. We're going to be doing step-by-step -step doing the inside. But honestly, guys, I am not going to do step-by-step -step on putting bolts through holes and tightening them up with an Allen wrench. If you needed somebody to show you that on a video, you probably don't have any business trying to build something like this. So, went ahead and bolted this guy down, this down, this one down. But I wanted to show you real quick one of the little dress-up things I like doing on my amps. And hopefully you guys agree with me. And if you don't, honestly, it's too bad because I think this looks so much better. Here's the way these output transformers come. And they have a little kind of wrinkly Ed Core sticker on the front of them. They got real nice powder coating, but this little sticker just doesn't do anything for me. And I hate these little flathead screws that they come with that are chrome and the little white washers that are underneath them. Now these washers are super important. They're like a shoulder washer that isolates the screw from the laminations so that the bolt doesn't short or create a, I forgot what the term for that, a, um, a shorted turn, I think is what it's called. It shorts out the transformer. So these insulated shoulder washers are super important. They need to be in there. But what I do is I take them out, I paint them black, and then put some uh, black oxide Allen bolts with black nuts on it and take the sticker off. And I think that just looks so much better. And I know some people have said, Hey, those blue transformers are ugly. You know, why don't you paint them? They don't match the other ones. For one thing, they're powder coated. And I hate to put just spray bomb paint over powder coating because I know it's not going to adhere real well. Even if you scuff it off, it's probably not going to stick great. And it's not nearly as durable as powder coating is. And... These being black, which are also powder coated, and these being blue, doesn't bother me at all. So, hey, maybe I'm weird like that. Anyway, don't like these chrome screws in these Hammond Transformers either. Obviously, these stickers are going to get taken off. So, I've got some little black Allen bolts that'll go in the choke like this. I just think that looks so much better. But I need to cut these to length. And then the Allen bolts that I got here in stock at home for these bolts are too long. Also need to be cut off. So I'm just going to use a little cutoff wheel in my Dremel tool to cut them to length. And then paint the ends of them black again. And so I'm going to get all the hardware changed out in these transformers. And then I've got the tube sockets installed. These keys go like that. These both keys go that way. Haven't decided yet on the rectifier tube for sure. We'll figure that out when we get inside. And by the way, I am going to be selling this amp on eBay when I'm done with it. And while for my personal amps, I'm fine with just putting a little switch on the side, although I have put them in the front before, and I talked to you about it matching. I'm going to get um, a switch like this. I'm going to be getting a black switch like this. That's a little angel eye switch where the outside glows an amber color that's real similar to the tube color when it's on. And mount that on the front right up here. So when it's off, it'll match the finish of the amp pretty much it'll be black and then when you turn it on it'll glow orange like like I said real similar to the tube filament color these are kind of a pain to install you have to drill a, or punch a pole that's fairly large I've got a chassis punch this size for doing that so gonna have to twist the AC wires and put them up in this corner to make sure that we don't have any hum 
getting into anything. But since the AC is all over on this side anyway, I don't think I know it's not going to be a problem because I've my personal lamp has one of those kind of switches on the front. The other the other kind of hassle with it is you have to come up with some pretty clean DC to run the LED. I know you can do like just a, a diode in series, or some people say you can just hook LEDs up to AC, but they're going to have the 60 hertz flicker, and that would drive me batty. And so I'm going to get a small bridge rectifier with a little smoothing cap on it to get some nice clean DC to run the LED. So it adds a little hassle to the wiring, but it does make the amp look a lot nicer. I'm probably going to be marketing this since I have done the upgrade with the tube rings and stuff of marketing it a little bit higher price point to see what happens. So anyway, let me get all this stuff bolted down and then we'll start exploring the inside and how we're going to lay out the wiring and the tag strips and all of that stuff. Okay, so I've gone ahead and installed all the black hardware in the Output transformers, the power transformer, and the choke. Got all the parts mounted on the top side. So let's go ahead and flip this thing over and start working on the inside wiring. So we've got kind of a mess of wires over here on this side that are all for the power supply. And I've kind of looked at how I'm going to lay things out. I've got this big 22 UF 630 volt film cap that's going to be the first cap in the power supply got it figured out how I'm going to mount it with this little piece of uh, plumbing strap material that's screwed down to the one of the nuts for the hold down the, the power transformer but we're not going to work on the power supply right now here are the output transformer wires. These are going to go to the speaker jacks, got them run through the back. So I've kind of seen where they're going to go. But I want to deal with the wiring for the heaters. So let me zoom in on that. And I want to deal with this first for a couple of reasons. One is that it's really the first thing that you do dealing with getting the driver and pow output tubes wired up and it kind of determines where a lot of the other wiring is going to end up going. I've built an amp like this before in the same general layout so I know where I want to put the heater wires that make it nice and quiet. This is going to be a little bit different than my last build. I learned a little bit from it and so that's going to really help us out here. So one of the things that I want to do is I'm going to take these heater wires and because this has a center tap in the filament windings, we don't have to create a virtual center tap. And we can, here's the center tap wire. It's this green with the yellow stripe. I can simply ground this and that creates the grounded center which will help reduce the hum and we'll show that as part of the power supply wiring. So what we're going to deal with now are these two green wires. We're going to twist them up like this and you want to twist them up fairly tight. But I'm just kind of seeing how this is going to be laid out and I think I want to put like a three terminal tag strip off of this bolt that's holding down one of the output transformers and run it to the two outer tags of it. And then from here, I can run it to the heaters on the tubes. Now, one of the things that I do that's a little unique is I don't just leave these vertical like this. So what I do here is first I get a, a drawing of the two pin layout, which is an EL34, and I print it up really big like this. And I have this marked as the keyway so I know which pins I'm gonna be using. 
And so on this tube, I know that pins one and eight need to be tied together on an EL34. They're usually done internally, but on EL34, they're this um, screen is brought out to the uh, to pin number one. So these two need to be tied together, and two and seven are the heaters, and they're across each other. Then this is the plate. This is where our ultralinear tap's going to go. And here's the grid that comes off the driver. So when we look at our tube here, we know these two pins are going to be tied together. And these are our two heaters. So I'm going to bend these over to get them away from the heaters. Like that. And then I'm going to bend these two in because these are our two heater wires or the two heater pins. Then I'm going to bend this one out a little bit and bend all these other ones out just a little bit to get them away from the heater. And then this pin here isn't used. So knowing this pin isn't going to get used, I pull it over like this. Cut it off and bend what's left down like that. We know that pin isn't connected to anything in this amplifier. So my plan is to run the heaters from here and then make up a twisted pair of wires that'll run the heaters like this across the top of this tube or the bottom of this tube looking at this direction and then continue on up here to the driver tube. So we're going to come across here and then up to the driver tube. Well, on the driver tube, I keep a, got a drawing of it. They're going to both be like this in the chassis. And so I know that these two pins are my heaters. And so that's these two pins right here. So I'm going to bend both of these over. Just like that. Now this pin is a shield that with a glass tube isn't used, but for a metal tube it is. But to start with, I'm just going to bend it over a little bit like this out of the way. Because eventually, we may end up hooking this up to a ground, but we're probably not. So we'll just get it out of our way. So these are going to be the two heater pins for the 6SQ7. So this will go like this across and then extend on and connect up to these two pins right here. So the same thing's going to happen on this side that these two pins are going to be the heaters and that's the shield that more than likely we're not going to end up connecting to anything. This output tube has been turned 180 degrees and so these two pins are going to be tied together and then this pin and this pin are the heaters. Then we'll bend these three back out of the way. And then this pin here is the one that's not used on this tube. And so we're going to cut it off. And doing this for me helps me keep up with, hey, Here's a pin we're not using. This is the one that's not connected to anything. And so it's just cut off and bent over. It helps keep me keep oriented which pins are what. So on this side, we're going to have the, from this tag strip, we're going to have the heaters come across. They're going to come down and then across because we want 
the wires going in this direction to go 90 degrees across these heaters. So this one's going to come down, across, and then up over this tube, and then over here to these heaters. And that's how I'm planning on running the heater wiring. And next I'm going to show you how I prepare wire to use for the heaters. And one last thing I'm going to do, because this shield is probably not going to be used, but it might be, I don't need both these holes. And so I'm going to cut off that extra shield pin length because we're probably not going to even be using that pin and it just kind of gets it out of the way. Okay, so next I'm going to show you how I make up the twisted pair of wires that I use for my heater wires. Now in all honesty, this really works better if you do it with a longer piece of wire than trying to do it with a really short piece like this. But I want to get it all on the camera, so I'm going to try to do it with this short piece. First you want to get two pieces of 18 gauge solid core copper wire and you start twisting them. Now you want to make sure they're twisted like this where you, you have the wires twisted around each other. You don't want to have it where one wire is like the, the blue wire is straight and the yellow wire is just twisted around it. You want them inner twisted. I don't know if there's probably a better word than that, but hope you can see what I'm talking about. So you do that. You go ahead and get that twist started manually like this down the whole length of the wire. And I'm no, I don't know why, but I really enjoy doing wiring up the heaters. I guess it just, to me, it really looks cool when it's done right. And, you know, there's like a science hand, kind of an aesthetic thing to doing it. And you don't, the twist doesn't have to be even because this is just kind of getting it started. But again, you want to make sure that you don't just have one wire straight with the other one twisted around it. You want to have both wires like being twisted at an angle to each other. And then at the end, and like in here, I'm actually getting a little bit of a one wire just twisted around the other. There we go. Now you put the other end, you put one end in some sort of a vise. And I just use this, this wood clamp that I've had forever. But whatever kind of vise you have will work fine. Then you take the other end and you put a good bit of it up inside the drill chuck and try to get it centered. And you want to get it pretty tight. And I mean, and the other reason, this is another reason that doing it with short pieces doesn't work that great, is you basically ruin this little section here because it's going to cut through the insulation. Then you get the, you make sure the drill's going in the right direction. You pull it tight. until it looks like that. And there's your twisted tight heater wiring. Now there's some debate on how tight you should get it twisted. That's actually probably got it a little too tight. So I'm not sure if I'm going to use this piece or not. Let me zoom in here and show you what I ended up with there. That's probably twisted a little too tight. So let me try another one off camera where I can pay a little more attention and go ahead and do a little longer piece and then show you what I end up with. 
Okay, so here's the next piece that I did. And I really think this looks more like what we're looking for. Like I said, this is, that's, I mean, it may not look that much difference, but that's actually twisted a little too tight. And it's probably stressing the insulation. This is more like you want, you want to see with the, the pieces of wire at about a 45 degree angle when it's twisted up. So, got my heater wire twisted up and we're going to start laying it out inside the chassis. Okay, here's our three wire tag strip that we're going to put under this bolt right here. And then we're going to bring these wires over, twist it up, and solder them to these lower connections down here on this tag strip. So we need to remove this nut with the most hated tool on my channel, my little channel locks that I love. We're gonna put that tag strip just like that, a little bit of an angle. And then these are gonna go just like that. And so we wanna kind of look at this. Leave a little bit of slack, but not a, doesn't need a lot. And cut these two off. And then we need to, I need to find my little wire strippers. Strip these two wires. And they're going to go through the lower parts of this tag strip. It might actually be easier to solder these onto this tag strip before we screw it down. We want to make sure that we don't have any stray wires and solder those in just like that. So let me get my soldering iron warmed up and we'll solder those two pieces of wire. If you're enjoying the channel, please subscribe, like the video, and we'll see you soon as we finish working up this wiring.